Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of the Surviving Mold Podcast, where illness is defeated and lives are restored. Today, you need to put your thinking caps on and your doctor's, well, coats, because you're going to need it as we deep dive into genomics and why that data can help us truly understand what's going on inside of our bodies. Because your body is like a system of systems. Think of it almost like a city. Many different systems working together, running each other, really for the betterment of one another. And here to explain why genomics are so important for understanding your physiology is Dr. Jimmy Ryan. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I like that example of the city um, because the city probably couldn't function if all those systems weren't working together uh, in conjunction. Um, totally so true. No, if you totally don't have true. water or if you don't have electricity, then the city. I think you said you're probably going to be unhappy. And that was definitely the <laughs> yeah. nice way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. That is for sure. Um, well, hey, uh, you know, so where are you from and what do you do and why are, why are we sitting here talking about genomics? Well, I, um, I've spent most of my life in South Florida and I have a lab in Deerfield Beach, Florida. And um, we look at gene expression. Mm -hmm. And gene expression is, uh, in, in another term, it could be called functional genomics. So the genome is, is your DNA. And a lot of people get tested for um, mutations in their genome. And that's actually a very good test to understand. And that gives you information on disease susceptibility. So what we do is a little bit different. We look at the expression of that gene in our patients. So we um, try to measure the number of genes, I'm sorry, we actually measure the amount of production from particular genes. Gotcha. And this is called transcriptomics. Wow. So when you look at a report, say from 23andMe, it'll give you um, mutations in your genome, but it doesn't give you any information on the expression of that gene. So we have about 50,000 genes in our DNA, and most of them actually don't code for proteins. They stay in a form called RNA, and um, they actually function as a regulator for other genes that code for proteins, which do the actual work for the cell. Wow. I, I don't know if I'm getting a little too wow. far in the weeds here. Well, but hold on. Let, let, let's take a step back just for a second. So what you're saying is what Progene DX does is the lab that not only measures things that are similar to what 23andMe does, but it's also giving you a lot more information as far as the expression, and we'll call it maybe an attitude. For example, you may have a 17-year-old, but you've got a really angry 17-year-old who plays lacrosse. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I try to use an example of, you can use an example of a musical instrument, and maybe a guitar is an easy thing to use. So if you um, look at a guitar, you can make certain qualifications about it. It's a ovation guitar, it's tuned to this key, it's got this type of wood, it's got it, all the necessary um, characteristics of the guitar, but it doesn't tell you how the guitar will perform in the hands of someone. So everyone has a genome, We're, they're all very similar, but we all basically play different music with our genome. So you gotcha. can play anything. You can play any song on the guitar. And most people, they're not playing the same exact song. Some people play very different songs. Even though they have the same guitar, they play different music. Or maybe and they even play different tunes and whatnot. Different tunes. And, and that's that kind of in a nutshell is the difference between looking at static DNA and the dynamic process of how your DNA helps uh, direct your body to survive. Wow. So this data, this information is helping 
patients and doctors truly understand how the body is operating on a cellular level. Is that correct? Exactly. So on a cellular level, but also on a day-to-day basis. Oh, wow. You have a cold, you're going to be expressing different genes than when you are feeling great and that's healthy. So that's how the body, it's, it's a dynamic process. So, so if I have more good genes when I'm sick, are you saying that maybe I should try to have kids while I'm sick? Is that like, no, well, I don't think, here? well, there's that, that, that qualifier good. That's a dangerous thing because <laughs> when you're sick and let's say you have the flu, uh-huh. you're going to produce uh, genes that help you fight the flu. So those genes are good. Mm -hmm. You just need different genes for different circumstances. Gotcha. So um, all of our genes are good. We we don't do well if we're not, you know, if we don't have all the genes that we're supposed to have. Gotcha. Um, So when when you, with working with ProGene DX, the lab that you have, um, and you're testing different patients, um, is it blood? Do you take a blood test? How does we take a blood test? the blood is drawn into a special tube which mm-hmm. preserves everything exactly as it is when it's drawn from the body. Gotcha. And so it's, it's a very tedious process to make sure that everything stays the same as when it just came out of your body because that's what we want to measure, what the blood is most like in your body. Uh, if you have a sample that sits around, mm-hmm. The genes are going to change because your blood is now out of your body and it's trying to adapt to its environment. So it changes constantly. And it's our genes, our DNA is made that way. It's an adapt, it's an adaptation to our environment. It's going to produce what it feels will be give you the best survival chances in that environment. So the DNA is like the the, the first supercomputer. It integrates all of the information in the environment and then outputs a certain amount of genes that will best suit that environment. Wow. Okay, so... So if the DNA is the supercomputer, do we have 50,000 supercomputers or 23 supercomputers? Well, every cell has DNA. Um, so we have trillions of supercomputers. We have trillions of supercomputers. <laughs> and Flowing and inside us all the time. You really flowing, are smarter than you thought, see? And flowing, yeah. <laughs> um, and your DNA controls a lot of uh, things that you may not know that you're doing. Um, your body is constantly regulating, trying to find an equilibrium and a homeostasis uh, without your knowledge, but it's constantly making adjustments to all of your systems. When I stand up, my blood pressure will change because of you know, the hemodynamics. And, 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 and some, some things happen with, you know, without the direct intervention of DNA, but the DNA had set up this system you know, so we're back ev- to the city system. We're here. we're back to the city system where okay, maybe you have a um, an infection and there's a release of cytokines from a stored pool. Well, the DNA didn't directly send the message to release these cytokines, but the DNA set the system up so that when you need this, I'm going to set a pool of this material right here, so when there's an emergency, it just releases. Wow. But the DNA has already put that system into place. You know, when we, um, when we are conceived, mm-hmm. we start out as one single cell. And from that, the DNA orchestrates what we are today. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's trillions of, we go from a single cell to trillions of cells that wow. can do all these things and think all these things. And so That's it's fascinating. It, it really is. It's truly it really fascinating. Is. So when genomics are really important for finding out data and information about our bodies and how they're acting and expressing themselves, how is that important when it comes to biotoxin related illness? So Before we started recording the show, you were saying, well, you know, we've we've talked about uh, genes and expression. You know, I can check for hundreds of things, but with the Shoemaker Protocol, I'm only looking for 
a certain number of things. What type of things are we looking for, and what types of things will these labs tell us? Well, the labs are going to look at the um, the types of genes we're expressing and the magnitude of their expression. So if we use an example of an infection, mm -hmm. uh, interleukin-1 beta is a molecule that's produced to help us fight infection. When we're not infected, we don't produce a whole lot of that. When we are infected with something, the body starts producing that. What it first does is it produces more copies of the gene. The gene then goes out and is turned into a protein. And that protein goes and does its job. So what we can do is when we see that there is an increase in interleukin-1 beta gene production, we understand that, okay, the body perceives an infection. So there's hundreds, maybe thousands of genes that get either um, turned, on, turned up or turned down in response to certain environmental stimuli. So if I understand, if I remember correctly, and I'm probably wrong, so bear with me. Um, if I remember correctly, in episode one, when we were interviewing the eight itches and whatnot, she mentioned, is it TGF beta one? Mm -hmm. um, which was a big indicator that she was inflamed. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, wow, I actually remembered that correctly. That's actually a shock right there. Um, well, so take us into why TGF beta one is one of those markers and its relationship and why it's important? Well, uh, that's very, very complicated, and it's more complicated than I could ex explain because really? I don't understand it. All right. But it's a, it is, TGF beta 1 is, is a cornerstone inflammatory regulator, which means uh, it, what's interesting is things are so interconnected, there's probably no linear relationships that you can say, this does this, does this, does this. Causation doesn't equal correlation? Well, there are, it's more like a spider web. Okay. If you want to think of it that way, everything is interconnected. Not everything, but uh, there are networks that are very tightly connected. So um, the fact that TGF beta, it, 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 it has a lot of connections to the immune system. And so if you said, TGF beta is elevated, it means this, that, that would be um, a reductionist type of attitude because if TGF beta is elevated, but IL-1 is downregulated, what does that mean? But if TGF beta is elevated, IL-1 is elevated, and MMP9 is downregulated, what does that mean? And if TGF beta is elevated. So now <laughs> you can see that we've got all these permutations where there's probably a uh, hundred, hundreds of different things that you have to consider in conjunction with TGF beta because all of those scenarios will be different. Is if TGF beta is elevated, but another important factor is is depressed, well that might equilibrate and say there's no net change in something. Huh. But if TGF beta is elevated and something else is elevated, that might equal a net change. And I it's think like, of, I there's, think there's like just a, I think of like a sound mixer because like exactly if you, if you have all these different levels that you can set, I mean you can set them to different different ratios, powers. Um, you can set you can split the power, right? And you can get a hundred thousand different outcomes on you know maybe. 15 knobs and, right. and that's kind of like what I'm sitting here thinking of as you're like you flip like, that's one exactly it. it and I didn't want to say this because I'm a little bit older so we used to play with we used to have sound equalizers where you could change the frequency of the sound you know if you mm -hmm. want more bass you want more treble and we would have about five knobs I don't knob, think that makes knobs. you sound you can, old at all uh, I still okay. use that well, they all the time they don't have them anymore I don't think but um, anyway so you imagine a soundboard where you've got 50,000 knobs mm -hmm. and you can turn each knob from zero to ten mm -hmm. and so everything there's 50,000 knobs and they're all being modulated all at once and and so if you turn one knob what's the difference of, well it doesn't it depends on what the other 49,999 <laughs> knobs are set at yeah. to determine what that one knob changing it 10 percent 
really means. Yeah. Um, so as you can tell, guys, we can go really oh, deep you, here. There's, there's, there's. It's, it's very, very complex. But uh, and sometimes you can't really. <laughs> You have to have a, a plan and move forward. You can't say, well, we don't know, because if this is high and this is low, it means something different when this is high and this is high. And that's absolutely true. But at the same time, when someone is sick, you have to move forward and you have to have a treatment plan. So is that why you only check for certain triggers or certain genes? Well, yes. I, I think at, at some point you have to stop... Um, trying to master all of these networks and reduce down and say, all right, I don't know what everything means. I never will know what everything means, mm -hmm. never. But I do know that when you are exposed to a mycotoxin, these toxins have direct impact on this system because I've measured it over and over and over. And, I, I, it, and, it, and it's in the literature, you understand these toxins. You can understand the targets of these toxins. So when someone's exposed to this toxin and you see that same target being modulated at the level of the gene, okay, then you have enough proof where you can come up with a plan and an idea of, of how to fix things. Wow. My brain is spinning right now. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, sp absolutely spinning. Um, so, but it, I think back to the spider web. Mm -hmm. You can say, "Well, if I, what happens if I push on the spider web here? The whole spider web will move to some degree. Mm -hmm. Parts will move more than others, but it, it doesn't. Nothing is going to stay the same because once you push something in a network, it's felt through the whole network, mm -hmm. and how the network responds. Uh, that's one of the things we're trying to understand. But it's it's just. It's complicated. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show so that you can get the show downloaded directly to your phone and listen to new episodes right when they come out. Please don't forget to leave us a review as it helps other people find out this information and you're learning just how powerful this information can be. That's going to do it for us today. And you're watching the Surviving Mold Podcast.